Well, I'm Trevor from WFO Concepts and I'm sitting here with Eric Miramon from EM Motorsports and we are in Auburn, California, not too far from our shop. No. Um, and we're sitting in front of Eric's somewhat put together 4400 car and we are exactly a week and two days from you leaving to go to Lake Bed, Eric? That's correct. Um, and we've known each other for quite some time. How, how long do you think we've been hanging out, Eric? Mm, almost 25 years. Almost 25 years, which is uh, more than your son here. He's 20 years old, so yeah. he was just a thought he, at that point. A twinkle in my eye. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's nice to have all these Northern California racers so close to our shop and for us to be able to come around and talk to everybody and be friends with all you guys for all these years. And uh, so this is a 4400 car that you actually built yourself. Um, when was this car finished, Eric? Um, in 2015, we finished the car. My brother-in-law, Phil Burton at No Limit, helped me build this car. Um, it wouldn't be this car without him, for sure. Um, at the time, we were pretty excited. We were helping a buddy out, Rick Waterbury, and we were kind of pit, and Phil was co-driving for him. And I went down and helped him a couple times, and, and immediately I was like, I wanted to build a car. And Phil built Rick's original Correct. car. And this Correct. is basically like the next step up from Rick's first Correct. car. Correct, yep. Um, it's a solid axle car. Uh, big motor, big suspension travel for a solid axle car. And at that time, there wasn't a lot of IFS going. Um, and you're just trying to build a car that you could put together yourself, affordably race, and go down there and have that's, fun. That's correct. And uh, what is different about this car over some of the other cars that we've looked at and many cars people see on the lake bed is that you and Phil actually built this race car. That's correct. And most of this race car was built right here in this small little shop at your house with all your buddies. Yeah, we originally built the whole car at Phil's shop and then uh, went down to Hammer's last minute, day before. Uh, we finished the car day before we were there. We're supposed to be so there. So just like this, a week and a half before the Hammer's race, you're thrashing, you're trying yep. to get a brand new car together to go race it. And what people don't realize is just because you can build a car and go to the hammers doesn't mean you're going to race, does it? No, that, that's true. That's what happened to us the first year. And the we, way the way Dave does it is you can qualify during the year um, if you race other races and place a certain way that qualifies you for king of the hammers. But when you're building a new race car all year, you don't get to go qualify anywhere. So you got to do it on the lake bed. Exactly. And it was the first time I was in the car. Totally new sport to me, and we did not we did not qualify that year. So. We gave the whole next year our, uh, our time and effort. I think we raced all of Ultra 4, all of Good Bees NorCal, and all of the Vora series just to get seat Which in time. hindsight, that is really, I, I spoke with someone else today who's putting the car together brand new to go down there and race. And we've been doing it so long, we know that you never really get that good results, uh, you know, unless you're in a Gomez car that you know, wins the first debut, you know, like last <laughs> yeah. year. But usually it's a fail, right? So yeah. if you build a car and you run a bunch of series and you shake it down for a year, then when you come to the show, you are prepared. Yeah. And so since then, that's 2015, what, you have uh, seven KOHs under your belt, I guess, at this yeah. point? Yeah, yep, that's correct. Um, or do you think seven or eight? I can't remember. It's seven or eight. Seven or eight, I don't, I don't yeah. Recall. And um, have you finished all those races? No, I... Um, we finished half of them for the most part. We this might actually be our tie to completing four. Where you got four and four. And four and four. So you're fifty yeah. percent yeah. efficient. And yeah. everybody talks a big talk. I'm gonna go race King of the Hammers. I'm a big race car driver. We're taking our team down there. We're gonna show everybody. Hype, 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 hype. Race starts. Green flag drops. Then you hear nothing about all these people. Nothing. The, they drop off the radar. They don't finish the race. Nobody knows what happened. And a lot of those guys quit and don't come back. That's true. And uh, so you've done this eight, you know, this will be your eighth time. Yeah. And to finish half of them is a big deal. It is, it is to us, for sure, absolutely. Yeah, and it, it's always a big deal for me when we come across the finish line, no matter what place we are. Yeah, I mean, you I know? prepped this car with my son and his friends, my friends that over the years they've all helped out, you know. We've done it all in this garage keeping the car alive and you know part of the big thing is that aspect of it and getting all the boys involved and everything it kind of keeps me coming back every and what year. people don't know is there's you know three three members of your team right here <laughs> yeah. sitting here watching us yeah. do this video Wait, waiting for us to get um, done so they can start thrashing there's the car. usually a lot more than three people here working on this car you know you have a really good group of people i hope to yep. stop by and see you guys on the lake bed because i feel that you guys run a really tight ship down there on the lake bed 
uh, you know, meetings, a, a, a great pit in Hammertown, um, all your pre-running, like, you guys actually take it a little too serious. <laughs> well, if you're going to put all that time and effort and, and money in, why, you know, you kind of have to. You do. A big yeah. part of this racing was showing my kids, like, starting something, completing something, and, you know, sticking to something, and that's kind of, like, driven me over the years is my, watching my kids grow up in the racing with me. Well, um, in fact, this is the first year my son will actually be racing with me. Yeah, and that's, that's a big deal to me. So your son, Brecken, mm -hmm. um, has worked at my shop. Yeah. And uh, I've seen him grow up, and he is, a, uh, is an awesome kid. And he puts in the hard work with you. And correct me if I'm wrong, but a year or two ago, this car was for sale. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're always for sale, I guess. But. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, Brecken takes a little interest, and it's like, all right, I'm going to get back in it, and, and Dad and Son are going to go racing. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, you know, this year, you're planning on starting the race, and then Brecken taking over and taking this thing across the finish line. That's correct. And just so you're, you're aware of where, what I'm thinking is, you know, a DNF is not an option. No, no option. Yeah, this we're going to finish. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So all hands on deck. We're going to be rooting for you. We're going to be watching out. We're going to definitely stop by and see you guys on the lake bed. Um, so really quickly, we're, we're, we're here to, to talk about the thrash for KOH, right? And we talked to a couple other people and their cars are already all together. Like they're getting ready to go in the trailer. We're at your house. It's a, it's a Monday night here. And, uh, it seems like it's far from together. Yeah. So tell us the hurdles you ran into in the last couple of weeks just trying to get this thing ready for King of the Hammers. Well, it started on Thanksgiving weekend. We brought, went down to Hammers with the car. Uh, so Breck and my son get some seat time in So it. you're already down there pre-running yep. and testing, thinking you had a pretty set up car. Yeah, well, just more so just making sure that he's comfortable in the car. He's raced Polaris's for years, but never the big car. Yeah. Um, we went down there and he, he did great, worked it all out, and then we, we just realized that the engine was time to freshen the engine. So we got back and we've been doing That's that. That's never ever just since. a quick freshen up. It's is never. It? No. And, and Especially to, this time of year. To get this engine out, this engine comes out through the top, right? That's correct. It comes out the front like any other engine. Yeah, comes out yeah. the front. Uh, transmission transfer case come up through the inside and out, but you never pulled those out? No, they, they've only got like 100, and, 100 miles on them. And then what'd you find with the engine when you sent it to the engine builder? Um, it, it was it, nothing catastrophic. It just needed, it needed, it was time to freshen. So you put a new Rains, crank in bearings. it, right? Uh, no, we just had the same crank trude. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. It just needed the standard freshener. So it's going back together. So you yep. literally have a week to get this thing back together running. And then what else you run into? The radiator started leaking? That, yeah, the radiator, we found a little tiny leak in that on uh, Saturday night about one in the morning. So After we'll, putting the engine in, and so, <laughs> so the, the last few the last few days it's been 12, 13, 14, 15 We've been hour grinding. days. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just so you can get ready to go down there. Yeah. And then you still have to do all the planning. You guys bring down quite a few things, three we or do. four trucks and trailers and RVs and yada yada, right? Yeah, it's a couple of days of just logistics and equipment and getting packed and prepped. My wife and my daughter help out. Like it's a whole family event. Well, so. when I'm hungry and I'm down there, you know where to come. I always come. <laughs> they got the best food for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Well. Uh, Anything else you want to add on, uh, you know, talk about this car, what's going on? I mean... No, I think the, the biggest part is I'm racing my son for the first time. So that's going to be exciting. It, and that was our big motivation to race this year. So. Well, I can't wait to see that. And I also want to reiterate that, you know, some people might look down on this car. It's a solid axle car. It's, you know, eight it's, years old. It's an old car. Um, it's wide, big... Uh, I consider it to be a big solid axle car, but the one thing I do like about this is it's plenty of room inside the cockpit, very safe car. It's comfortable, overbuilt, strong. strong tube, um, and the fact that you and Phil built everything on this car. Yep. Um, and it's not a bought car. There's no. so many people that buy cars and show up to King of the Hammers and go racing. You know, uh, I had a guy call me today to uh, buy one of our diff skids, which you have them on the front and rear on the 10 inches. And uh, he said, I want a high pinion diff skid for the rear. And I happen to know the car that he bought is a rear engine car. So a rear engine car does not have a high pinion rear end in it, does it? No. What, what's it have in it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> so a, a, rear, a rear engine car has a low pinion rear end that is flipped 
Thai pinion. Correct. So it's a special disc kit that we make. Yeah, it's, it's not a, gonna work. <laughs> yeah, and so like that to me, that's a bummer. Like you're going to the lake bed, you're taking a quarter million dollar race car, you're gonna go race with the big boys, and you haven't put in the work. You know you what know, I say? Good like luck. Like you guys have, right? <laughs> yeah. Good luck to him, right? So your team, you guys have put in the work, you know, you have the car that'll get you across the finish line. You know how to drive. I know Brecken can drive. You know, I've seen him drive and everything else. He's already got the practice time in. You guys are already ahead. You've been down there pre-running. So I think you're basically lined up in line to go. Now it's time to just get these kids to put this thing back together. Yeah, and, that, and that's actually the cool part is we've had the same team working on this car forever. So they all know every nut and bolt on this thing. So it actually goes better, goes together pretty quick. And when it's down in pit for whatever reason, they're on it. They got it figured out. They're like a little wolf pack. They are a little wolf yeah. pack, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for taking some time to talk about the car, and yeah. I can't wait to see you guys down there on the lake bed uh, together and running. Heck yeah. All right. Come on by, and uh, we'll eat some food. Yeah, if, if I get hungry, I'm stopping by. <laughs> I Sounds know good, that. Trevor. <laughs> thanks, thanks, buddy. For talking to you, right? Yeah. Blake, you think this mic's going to work? You better go. Huh? hope so dude we got a backup mic just in case we got my homie on top uh he's the furry boy named mike yeah. mike the mike mike the mike eminem yeah dude i f double check triple check every goddamn time now <laughs>